What's up, everyone? Welcome to Inside the Force. Dave Cottingham with Hannah Burr. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Good to see you this evening. Good to see you as well. Yeah, we are getting into episode, this is 452. I kind of, kind of started thinking about like, man, I guess... I guess, we, I guess we got a little while to we're almost the three uh, five hundred, but man, that's that's coming less up. than fifty episodes. So, uh, but that's 50, if we do weekly, it's about a year. So we get, we got about a year, I think, yeah. right? So, uh, but I was just thinking four fifty two. Wow, that's a it's a good amount. So anyway. Here we go. Uh, thanks, of course, to our patrons, as always, for supporting the show. We really appreciate that and and uh, can't say that enough. Uh, go to patreon.com slash inside the force if you're interested in checking out our tiers. Got a couple things to get into, Hannah, on this. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, we, we did a couple uh, or we did a we're going to do a couple more, but we did a behind, beyond the saga. Finally, get back into the comics right now, um, which are slow. Is it, it, the comics world right now is a little slow in the Star Wars world. There's only one, re, re, a couple really running, but one major one, which is the Battle of Jakku. Mm -hmm. There's several series of that coming out right now. But uh, other than that, you know, trying to catch up. I'm actually reading a little bit more. I'm trying to get some of these comics caught up because there's a there has been a lot of them in the past obviously so we're continuing the star wars series that takes place between empire and jedi mm -hmm. we're finishing the vader series as well so one series that i don't think we i don't think we've done which i keep forgetting to do is we got to get into uh dr afra yep i was just about to say that's one we need to get into right um because again i think she's been a very popular character on the scene in the comics and there's always been some rumors of whether or not she's going to make the live action yep. jump eventually so or even the animated version of her we'll see but big character out there that i think it's worth talking about that we haven't really talked about yeah so speaking of that before we get into some some of these comics i might as well go into it because like you know uh i was looking at it they're really pumping out these Battle of Jakku issues. I mean, they're coming out once a week. They're not really even doing this oh. monthly. So uh, next week, uh, Republic Under Siege, which is, so the Battle of Jakku was, there was a four part series called, uh, uh, I can't, uh, it was called Resurgence uh, or something like that. I might have to look that up real fast. But, um, but anyway, that's like the first series. Now the second series is called Republic Under Siege. So number one is next week. Number two is a week after that. Number three is December 4th. And number four is December 11th. And then there's a little bit of a gap. And then the third part of that series called Last Stand, number one comes out actually on Christmas Day. Huh. And kicks off that. So I'm actually really interested in that series because of the whole, again, uh, the whole aftermath series that we, you know, they did the whole book series about roughly, right. you know, the whole battle of So I'm wondering how that coincides with that book series. I mean, this, so. this seems like it's a lot more about Luke and Leia as versus the books. Uh -huh. So that might be the big difference, but I haven't, I haven't read it yet. So I'm not, I'm, I haven't got into it. Well, I'm just really curious about the rush. I, I agreed. I, I don't. I think. Um, I want to say that I. I think it's because there's not there's nothing else running with it. Oh, okay. Because I thought, like, what if they're do, trying to tie these comics into maybe an animated series, or maybe. I don't know. Well, Skeleton Crew is you know coming out, and so I wonder if they're trying to make that connection with Skeleton Crew. Yeah, I mean, I mean that could be it. It's possible. It's definitely possible. Uh, Insurgent Insurgency Rising was the first first part of this series. Okay. Um, which 
just ended this past week. So again, number one for Republic under siege is next week. So yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, the aftermath series, which we did, we did definitely did behind beyond the sagas of those. If everyone wants to go check those out, I was talking about those because those were, you know, those were part of the first group of books that first came out when the Disney, Disney, uh, was bought by Lucasfilm or Lucasfilm bought Disney. Right. I'm sorry, Disney bought Lucasfilm. Yeah, we knew what you meant. And put yeah, and put that this new you know all this new canon and 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 this book these books by Chuck Wendig came out. And I mean, I you you read? I mean, they were really good. They were. But it, but it followed this whole new group of rebels that we never had met, right? Um, well, one technically, of, one, we met some of them. Uh, I mean. Not this main group, right? Yeah, I mean, no, you're talking no, not about the main like, group. But. Yeah, you're talking about Wex, uh, Snap Wexy's mother, yeah. Nora Wexley, and uh, a couple other ones that obviously their names escape me now. But um, and then you had this big other villain now, this uh, Gallus Rex. Yes. So I'm again, I'm curious how this comic series, if it ever mentions. Rax and you know what happened there, but it doesn't seem like it does. So we'll see because yeah. on the covers you can see Leia's on the cover, Luke's on the covers. So definitely Luke. Luke is more involved in this than what I feel like we were led to believe because right. Luke was totally absent in the aftermath series. I yeah, I think though that just shows that truly the Battle of Endor didn't end the war you know what i mean it just like everything trickled from that but i really wonder if this is just a way to kind of help set up uh uh oh my gosh what skeleton crew yes yeah i mean that's possible i think learning more of the learning more of the formation of the new republic yes probably will help a lot absolutely because that's a huge, that is a huge thing. You have to think um, politically. That's a lot to help people understand. Hey, we're back in a democracy versus we're no longer in a dictatorship. Like that's going to take time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, and I, you know, we don't really, we didn't really get a lot of the pol- the political side of it in the aftermath series either. No. I don't think we got any. Like, yeah, because barely got any. I was trying to think. Was even Mon Mothma? I don't even know if she was mentioned in the after books, aftermath books that much. I feel like she was mentioned maybe once. Yeah, but it was like a throwaway line. It wasn't a. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'd have to go back and read all those again, or listen to all those again. But I think I think yeah. that may be part of this. Maybe it's Mothma's role and how she gets back to. I mean, how she gets elected as chancellor. We know she becomes chancellor. Yes. So, you know, that process has got to happen. So, I don't know. I'm interested in that. The only other comics right now are running right now is Ahsoka, which is based on the series. Right. And there is an Ewoks comic book series right now. That's amazing. <laughs> I know. I'm not I sure how. I, I'm, I'm curious about that one, too, because I'm not sure. Because it's like Wookiees, right? They, they talk and they, you don't know what they're saying. They're not. Yep, they don't yep. ever subtitle. Yep, them. yep. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So there's your there's your comic comic uh, publishing release schedule. Uh, again, Battle of Jakku is really the the main focus now. I think what they should do with, or I think what it would be really funny if the uh, Ewok comics were just the Ewoks, like in their language, at the book, and at the end you have C three PO summarizing everything that happened. Yes. There you go. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm totally interested in how, if they have if they're having like speaking conversations with each other in this. I I'm assuming so, yeah. but actually, I, you know what? I did read possibly that this is these are centered around or right around the Ewok movies that happened. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh my word! <laughs> yeah, like right after Return of the Jedi or something like, or right before Return of the Jedi, something like that. So I, I I'm not I'm not sure if I read that or not. I can't remember, but I, that's kind of what my feeling is about it. That's okay. <laughs> okay. A um, couple things. One, uh, I thought this was interesting news that centered around Skeleton Crew. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. So they they there was an article on StarWars.com that talks about the composer that has been hired to write the score for Skeleton Crew, and yes. it is uh, his name is Mick Giacchino. Now, he, what if has you don't, he done? Well, that's the thing. If you don't, if you recognize his name, but maybe slightly, he is the son of Michael Giacchino, mm -hmm. who is a massive composer and someone I am a huge fan of. He scored, I mean, not only did he score Rogue One. Okay. Michael Giacchino is ma a massive um Composer mainly for directors such as J.J. Abrams and Gareth okay. Edwards, Taika Waititi. So he's scored oh. Mission Impossible movies. He did Jurassic World. He did oh. movies from the MCU, the Star Trek reboot series with J.J., Pixar films. Just so you know, because I know you're a big Disney person, the, um, the Pixar ones. Oh, man. Uh if you say up, I will cry. Uh, let me tell you. I had it right here. Uh, Pixar, he did up. Ah! Yes. I love that score yes. so much. Right? It's like the other night. I don't know why, but Zach and I were like, oh, Hans Zimmer. He's mostly known for Pirates of the Caribbean because that's our, those are memorable themes. And then we were looking up and we're like, wait, he did The Lion King? Wait, he did Prince of <laughs> Egypt? <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Oh, the first so he also, oh. yeah, is he also scored Coco <gasps> and Incredibles 2. Okay. And Lightyear. Okay. Yeah. And as far as Marvel goes, he did Doctor Strange. Okay. He also did Zootopia. I love Zootopia. That's yeah, such a great movie. I mean, this guy's done. He did. He did the three Spider-Man movies: Homecoming, Far From Home, No Way Home. Okay. And then, of course, for Star Wars, he did Rogue One. I mean, the guy's done. The guy's massive, right? Well, anyway, his son Mick yeah. is the composer of Skeleton Crew. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. I, I I'm trying to look and see. I'm not sure what Mick has actually done <laughs> uh, as far yeah, as I was like about to say, score. What has he done? Let me, let me see if I can find out his resume here. Oh, did he just do? Wow. What? He just did the penguin, which I just finished that series Sunday. No, he didn't. Are you watching the penguin? I'm not watching it, but I've seen uh, bits and pieces. Like I've, you know, I've seen trailers. The Penguin like, is incredible. I've heard really good things. It's uh, like, Dave, I'm surprised you have time to watch TV. That's like the only show I'm watching right now. <laughs> and it, it, and I, you know, I've watched it. Uh, I can't watch it. I haven't watched it like as it's coming, like right when it comes out. So right. I'm like, but but it did just um, finish Sunday night the finale, and I had to watch it that night because I'm like dying to see at the ending Colin Fer Colin Farrell plays the Farrell. penguin which is incredible oh. if he doesn't win an award it's robbery because even, even you can't if even tell he's it's nominated him. do what what if he's at least nominated no he he needs to win there's oh really if, if you I'm telling you just watch one episode with him in it and I'm telling you you will you, you can't you can't you will never guess it's him you would never guess it's him. Oh, what uh, what streaming service is it on? It's on HBO. Oh, thank goodness. Do you have HBO? I do. Yeah. I have Max. Yeah, Max. That's it. Yeah, it's it's so he so he scored that apparently. He scored Zootopia, the Zootopia Plus, like the extra episodes that are on Disney oh, yeah, Plus right yeah. now. Uh, Muppets Mayhem. Yeah, he did Extinct. He did a couple shorts. Uh, yeah, so he's very he's 
fairly new at this, only since 2015. Well, good for him for getting this. Absolutely. Yeah. This I wonder is if Penguin's dad, massive. I'm telling you. Yeah. I wonder if his dad's like an assistant composer, just kind of like there to, you know. Well, he probably helped his dad on some of these other ones, I'm assuming. Right. I'm assuming that. And now it's his, it's, it's his, his dad's turn. turn to be like, hey. Not that the other ones he did weren't big. It's just. Yeah. Whew. But I love the fact that his father actually also did other things that were connected to John Williams, like Jurassic World. Right. So he knows John Williams and how he does motifs. And yes, you know, he loves brass, all of those notes that it's it's actually if if you're um, if you really want to uh, go down a rabbit hole. <laughs> Learning about composers and how they put music together and how the greatest composers became the greatest composers, it's fascinating and it's yeah. so cool. And then you won't unhear it. Same way as if you study media, you won't see a movie the same way again. Uh, again, if you study composers, you will not listen to a movie the same way again. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, it's one of the things where, you know, I grew up in the eighties, so th th I feel like there was like this, I mean, obviously that's when like late seventies, eighties is when John Williams kind of blew up. Right. Right. Because he, think about it. He scored some of the most iconic, I mean, the most iconic scores, obviously star Wars. But yes. then he did, he did Superman, you he know, did Superman, that, he did ET, he did. Jaws. Indiana, he did Indiana Jones. Jurassic Park. Well, yeah, that was early '90s, but like, but, I mean, he's still. totally. But like in the '80s, though, I'm like he grew this library of film. Now, granted, they mainly came from George Lucas and Spielberg and Coppola and guys that were kind of filmmakers together, right? Yeah. And but then he branched out and started doing obviously almost everything. But you know, it's funny because. I remember my, my first, so Michael, his father, Mick's father. Right. I, I want to say it was, I can't remember which one, it, which one came first, but I think it was when I watched Super 8, which was okay. a J.J. Abrams directed movie. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of, it was executive produced with Spielberg, right? Because Spielberg helped J.J. It was kind of like this modern day Goonies movie, you know, that right. they wanted to do. And I remember watching that. Wow. That's a perfect way to describe it. Modern oh, it totally Goonies. was. It totally was. But I remember listening to it while that score was going on. I'm like, man, th whoever this is, is talented. And it kind of sounds like, kind of sounds like John Williams. But then I, I researched it and found Michael G uh, G Giacchino. And, and man, I just, I loved his stuff and I followed his stuff. And he's now, this makes sense too. Cause what I just saw in Michael's, Resume Mick's father is he did the Batman, which is <gasps> with Robert Pattinson. With Robert Pattinson, oh. and so it makes sense that his son is crazy. His son is the one that did the Penguin, which is a spinoff yep. of that that cinematic series of Batman, because the Penguin has a cameo in that movie, and then now he has his own series. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's really cool how they did that. Um, anyway, but I just wanted to mention that I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Giacchinos and I hope, I hope it, I mean, that right there kind of, to me, it elevates start to skeleton crew already in my mind. I was about to say, cause like the thing is sure. Editing plays a huge part in it. Actors play a huge part of it. Writing. It all plays a huge part, but take out the music. Yeah. And see how well your film carries. That's true. Music can help it just the way that editing can, just the way that acting can, directing can, lighting can. Music can truly make or break your movie. Right. And that's why, again, to me, anyway, I know it's not yours, but to me, that's why Rogue One is so special because the soundtrack of that, this or the score of that is great. I, I will not deny that it is a great score and it's very John Williams esque. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I will not deny that it's yeah. a great score. I think that's one thing that you can consistently say across 
all Star Wars medium is the music has been phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But just like, you know, just like in um, A New Hope, when you know, obviously that was John Williams' first Star Wars movie he did, but like, you know, that binary sunset mm-hmm. theme is like, that's like the theme you kind of think of when you see Luke and that storyline. Well, you know, Michael Giottino, he did the same thing with Rogue One. There's that kind of Jin Erso theme throughout that just sticks with it. And it's just so perfect. Like you said, it's very John Williams, but it is different, you know? And It's that motif. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So anyway, that, that, that's really, uh, that's really exciting for me to, mm-hmm. for, for Skeleton Crew. I really like that. Speaking of Skeleton Crew, which this was, um, so, so this past weekend, uh, D23 was in Brazil. Oh. They had a little event down there, weekend down there, and there was, you know, some reveals, not really big reveals. The the crowd there got to see some skeleton crew footage. They got to see some Mandalorian and Grogu footage. Oh. And then, of course, the announcement came, which was surprising, for Andor Season 2, two. which is coming April 22nd. You surprised by that? How soon we're getting that? No, I'm not. I, I wonder- think it's soon. Now, you kind of said it. You thought it was a little sooner, but. Yeah, I thought uh, it was going to be earlier than that, but. I thought, I'm pretty sure it was, it was, it was touted that it wasn't going to come out till like late, late 2025. So. I had a feeling that one would come earlier just because we haven't heard about anything else in the works. True. So. If you don't, he- if you don't, and it's like the same reason why we don't necessarily hear that many updates about the Knights of the Old Republic reboot, remake, whatever it is, right. it's because it's still in progress. It's still work in progress. Mm-hmm. They don't know when it can come out. So just because of that alone, I'm like, this is going to come out sooner than what they're projecting because they don't have anything else currently that we know of. Yeah. So that's why it's not the biggest surprise to me that it's coming out so soon in 2025 and I'm super duper excited. (laughs) Yeah, I am too. Uh, This is, it's a welcome announcement and and honestly, it does make sense to me now because one thing that kind of, kind of maybe lost in some people's minds, but it's Star Wars Celebration is coming out in April. Mm Mm-hmm in Japan. So this does line up for them to do like a little premiere there and they'll probably show the first couple episodes to the crowd there before actually it's released, which is kind of typical of celebrations. So yeah, based on that, I thought it would actually come out in May, not the end of April. True. Yeah. Could, yeah, could have, but I want to say star Wars celebration is actually that weekend, uh, that, yeah, it's pretty close, isn't it? It's uh, Celebration 25 is uh, April 28th. So it's April 18th through the 20th. Okay. So they will bet you they will show first couple episodes before it actually shows on Disney Plus, which is the 22nd. So Yeah. So that does make sense. So there you go. Uh, and or, and then, you know, of course, there's some, there's some leak. There's not leaked, but there's like a, a, a what's coming in 2025 trailer out there for Disney Plus. If you watch that, there is some shots. There's like 10 seconds of Andor season two in there. I do anticipate them being them putting out a trailer at some point. I I doubt it'll come before Skeleton Crew. So it'll probably be after Skeleton Crew wraps when they'll start advertising for that. Unfortunately, but yeah, but right, you know, but and, uh, Skeleton Crew wraps. Uh, so if it debuts on the third, you're talking two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, we're done with skeleton crew January 7th or I'm, I'm sorry, January 14th. So, uh-huh. so it'll be about three months until we get, yeah. get this. So that's good. Three months of marketing. It's not bad. But the question I think becomes, which there's no way we can answer it, but what's after Andor in 2025? Because there's, I mean, they're not shooting Ahsoka until 2025. Mandalorian Grogu is a movie that they just shot, and that's not coming out until May of 2026. Right. 
the Ray movie is not that there's rumors that that should start shooting next year as well, but that's not slated till December of 26. So I, I think it's an animated series. I, I don't, it's, it hasn't been announced yet, obviously, but I think there's got to be some animated series coming out, and I think they'll probably put that out towards the end of 25. But, but we, it's possible we could go a pretty long time without Star Wars. They might do a Ventress animated series. Yeah, that would be the hope. Something that continues off of Bad Batch. Yeah. But something new would actually be pretty cool, too. Oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. But who knows? Uh, who knows? But it could be that this was the slot where Acolyte season two was supposed to fill. That's uh, definitely possible for sure. You know, yeah, that uh, more likely that's probably what it was supposed to be. Yeah. And so they're like, so it's either uh, let's throw something together or let's push something up that we could help fill the slot or it's going to be, well, people are going to have to wait. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that, that kind of leads into our, our kind of main topic here, which was a little bit of news over the past few days because there was this announcement of a new writer that was hired not to do the Ray movie or the you know Dawn of the Jedi or any of these other movies, but to write a completely new trilogy of Star Wars films. Oh, really? Yeah. Didn't we talk about it? We didn't talk about this? No. Oh, I thought we talked about this. Maybe we didn't. We about didn't. This? I just forget. Did I forget? Oh, maybe we didn't. Maybe I was thinking of somebody. Maybe me and somebody else were talking about maybe this. Maybe you and Martin? That's possible. Uh, that is possible. Anyway. Okay. So let's bring up the, let's bring up that, which is not, since you haven't really heard of this. So, the thing is, Hannah, is they hired, um, hold on, let me pull up his, I want to make sure I get his name right. Um, they hired a new writer mm -hmm. to write a new trilogy. And the, the, the discussions were that this trilogy, could it be, could it be 10, 11, 12? It is not. That, that kind of got... That kind of got debunked that it's not, it's all new, it's supposed to be new characters and whatnot. And the writer's name is Simon Kingberg's Kingberg. And he has been associated with Lucasfilm already. He's written, um, I think he, he, I think he's directed an episode of the Mandalorian. Okay. He's worked with Filoni on rebels. So he's got some success in Star Wars already. Uh, he doesn't have the greatest success outside of Lucasfilm, but he's done some stuff. I think he wrote, I want to say, gosh, I'm not getting my writers. I think he wrote this. No, never mind. No, that's not right. So I won't even say it. Uh, anyway, so the idea was, can he come in here and write these? New now, again, as you know, this is development, right? This is right. why Lucasfilm hasn't even announced this. This is just in the trades. This is like right. Deadline and Hollywood Reporter. Because it could fall apart, just like Ryan Johnson's fell apart, just like you know the Benioff and Weiss fell apart. Yeah. So and even if he starts writing right now, he's doing he's doing the remake of the Running Man right now. Do you remember that Schwarzenegger movie, The Running oh Man? Oh my gosh! <laughs> well. Catch that. Yep. He's doing a rewrite right now, uh, a reboot of that movie right now. So he's not even going to start writing this until after that. Wow. So even if this truly goes through, we're talking probably five years at least till we get probably a sniff of what's going to happen. Right. So I'm not really holding my breath on it. But what has come out of this a little bit is that It's that it's possible that they've been talking about him incorporating. Again, it's not episode. It's not a Skywalker saga series, but it's still incorporating the character of Ray. As as maybe even this kind of Obi Wan type of character, right? This older version. 
So now all of a sudden, there have been reports coming out that Lucasfilm people have kind of leaked out that that the focus on most of these films that they're trying to put together is that is having Ray be a part of these films because I will I'll read you the quote that I pulled from one of the articles and it says that Ray to reportedly appear in several upcoming Star Wars films quote she is the most valuable cinematic asset so now someone someone had put together I read that there's relatively nine films in development now if you count his three, if you count the Ray movie, if you count Dawn of the Jedi, if you count Ma- Mandalorian and Grogu, if you count like Taika's movie, possibly um, Steve Levy's movie, possibly, and then somebody else's. I can't remember who it was, but it's like you got if you got nine films in development, it's like how many of those are Ray centric? Well, right now, if it's these three and the Ray movie she's doing, then that's four at least. But are these other ones kind of yeah, obviously she's not going to be in Dawn of the Jedi. She's not going to be in um, oh Patty Jenkins' Rogue Squadron was the other one. So how many could she possibly be in? Blah blah blah. Anyway, the but I want to I want to focus on that really. Ray is the key to the cinema. It, it, Ray is, is the what I say. Ray is the biggest cinematic ass, asset. The most valuable cinematic asset. Oh what God. say you, Hannah, to that quote? Why? <laughs> like, look, I'm all for strong female characters. I really, really am. Ray is not one of them, in my opinion. Oh, okay. She has aspects of it, but at the same time, not really. Leia hmm. is more, like, she's not Leia. Mm-hmm. She's not Padme. And like, no, why? Why? Why can't it be like at this point? Why can't it be Luke? Or Leia or like, well, they're they're older. Uh, well, Leia's I know, I know, past, but I'm just but, saying like she is she really? I don't know. You t- you obviously don't think so. I I have nothing against da- Daisy Ridley. I think she is a ama- an amazing actress, and I think she played Ray very very well. But if you're saying this is our key creative asset for Star Wars, I'm very concerned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I just am. Mm-hmm. Like for feminists, it's supposed to be like I don't really need a man's help. I can do this on my own. Yet we see her constantly reaching out for help from all these male. And I don't know if they're like, okay, well, she's now the Obi-Wan character. So now people can reach out to a a woman instead of a man. Okay, cool. But if you're telling me this is all going to be about her, her journey's done. There's nothing else to talk about. At least with Luke and Leia, you can argue there's still more to talk about because now they have to deal with the fact that, oh, I don't know. Their father was trying to kill them both. Mm. They still have to work out their trauma. Ray doesn't really have that. Yeah. She came to peace with um, Ben. She came to peace about Luke and all of that. So if she's going to be the next Obi-Wan character, that's fine. I, I I think that's actually a great role for her because at the end of um, episode nine, um, the rise of Skywalker, at least she seems like that. She's more wise. She's in a more knowledgeable position. Mm-hmm. So I can see that and I'd be for that. But if you're telling me it's all about her and her journey, her journey's done. What more is there to say? Yeah. And that's just, I'm not trying to crap all over these movies. I'm not. Once again, Daisy Ridley, love her. She's a phenomenal actress. I just, in my personal opinion, don't like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about you? I think you disagree with me a bit. Well, I think, 
you know, I'm I'm torn on this one because I do like I I do like the character of Ray. Uh, I think that like I like her character, but the fact that they pushed it as like this is a a strong female character, blah blah. I was like, ah. yeah. I'm mean, look. I I don't. In the end, I don't think the sequel trilogy you know turned out the way i thought was good uh it was it's good it's fine but it's not i think it could have been so much better and it has nothing to do with her i think it's you know if you if you if you really want to call it the skywalker saga which is you know, one through nine, if you really want to call it that again, you know, and I know we've mentioned this several times, but it's like the, the focus, the Skywalker saga is mainly about Anakin and his kids. Right. Um, and Ray kind of got forced into being a Skywalker, right? She's not a Skywalker, truly, actually, she's not, I mean, but, and I and I'm not sure when they say when I see their most valuable cinematic asset. Like I, I feel like she was popular, but I don't think she was that popular. Agreed. Right? Agreed. Uh, I feel like Kylo Ren was probably more popular. Uh, I feel like Han and Luke and Leia were still most popular. And unfortunately, you killed all of them off, you know, yeah. in, in the sequel trilogy. So, I mean, it goes to tell you, right? So, so definitely continuing the Skywalker saga, uh, hands down, should have been no question, not 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 happening. Which yeah. hopefully that they stand by that. Like doing an episode ten would be mind boggling, no. right? Absolutely not. Right. So even though she claims she's now a Skywalker, like no, right. And I was disappointed. Now, again, they can do what they want. But personally, as a fan, I was disappointed that Luke wasn't the one to restore the Jedi Order. Because he's the chosen one. Well, son of the chosen one, right? Yeah. But he was the last Jedi. Like yep. and He was tasked by Yoda to rebuild, pass on what I've learned, you know, like. And he did, he did, we saw in comics, like he did start it, but just because his nephew started turning, like he destroyed everything and then exiled himself. And anyway, we, you know, that's, we'll get to that when we do the commentaries. <laughs> oh, yes, we will. Oh, oh, the last Jedi, outside of the green milk scene, I think there's a lot we have to talk about. Yeah, 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 right. But now that you're telling me that Ray is going to be the one to start the Jedi Order, and again, I'm all for that. That's fine. Uh, but like you said, I don't. You know, it, it really depends on. It really depends on what she has to face. Hmm. And what that what what's the evil going to be? Because you can't just re keep rehashing Sith. I mean, you can, but it's not really original. No. Bring so, back the use on Vong at least. Like, come on, that'll at least make it interesting. Uh, agreed, one hundred percent agreed. Um, but you know, just throwing her in in a trilogy as an Obi Wan type character to me, I'm not sure. I'm just not sure how much of an impact that would be. I would take, like, the thing is, impact-wise, I could see her being an Obi-Wan character as, like, the purely the mentor. But the story does not center around. Like, you know, in the yeah. hero's journey, you have that that Gandalf character, that Dumbledore character, that, that wa the quote-unquote wise old man character. Mm -hmm. That's her. I, if that's her, then I'm okay. Let's have somebody else go on a journey. Because her story's done. Yeah, I think that's what they're talking about. 
Um, also, I just want to go back to something you said, how the Skywalker talk is supposed to be about Anakin and his kids. Shadow, like I'm pointing over at my bookshelf, Shadow of the Sith. Yeah. That would have been a perfect transition into everything else. That's right. Yep. Such a great, great book. Mm. Should have been made into a movie. Should have been episode seven. So, so I think you're right. I think the, you know, having her as the Obi-Wan type character, I think that's what their plan is, is just to have the familiarity of her character in this Mm -hmm. to, to kind of bring the fans in and then have this new journey with these characters. I think that is the plan. Okay. Again, I just don't think that she's, maybe I'm wrong. I also think she's that popular of a character. No, like, sure, she's popular, but, like, I think of Ahsoka. I think of Uh, Anakin. Yes. I think of Luke, Leia, Han, Chewie, C-3PO, R2-D2. Yes. Yeah. Well, and and it's one of the things where, you know, when the movies were coming out, when um, 789 were coming out, you you tell me if you heard differently, but I I I didn't hear a lot of hatred for Ray, right? I, I mean, as a as a woman, I did hear some people like, "Oh, well, she's a girl, boo boo boo," and I'm like, well, huh, "Grow out of middle school." <laughs> <laughs> um, but outside of that, no. But here's the thing: what was the part you were most excited to see in the trailer? The cameo of Han Solo. Of course. Yeah. The cameo of Leia. The cameo of Luke. That's what you were waiting for yes. when you were watching the trailers for yeah. 789. And 7 was, you know, 7 was unifying. Like, no one really talked bad about 7. I mean, no, there was... I mean, I think the worst thing I've heard about 7 is it's a rehashing of A New Hope. Uh, that's exactly what you heard. And you heard that from only my, my kind of my generation of fans. Even you know, my generation of fans said that too. Yeah. Like I have a lot of friends my age who are like, that's just a rehashing of a new hope. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's surprisingly that they were that into the new hope, but, uh, we because, were, but we also love Jar Jar Binks because, so. because my generation of people, my generation that I've, I talked to a lot about it was because they're, they're not really into the prequels at all. Right. They were mm. they're strictly original trilogy people. And then see the, to see that kind of retelling almost of a, a new hope that did turn them off a little bit. That but, makes sense. But, you know, overall, you know, when, when eight came out, obviously the, there was definitely more attacks on, on, um, Rose's character, like Rose, uh, what was her name? Kelly Marie Tran, who played yeah. Rose. Like there was more hatred on her. It was more hatred on just, <laughs> Ryan Johnson and the storyline and all that stuff. And and you never really heard anything bad really again for Ray and for Kylo and things like that. It was like, it was mainly the storyline and then how they treated Luke and all that stuff. And in the end, just that reveal that she was a Palpatine. Of course there was a, a real big divide about that too. Like what are you talking about? You know, Palpatine, how did, how could Palpatine have kids and you know, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah. So anyway, I I I I didn't think she was as popular. Like like, it's been what? It's been five years almost for uh, for a Star Wars movie. Last time we got a Star Wars movie, Episode Nine, something like that. I, in these five years, I have not heard the Star Wars community or Star Wars fans screaming like, "We want more Ray." Wait, right? has it really been? Wait, wait, has it really been five years? Yeah, twenty nine December twenty nineteen was when. Rise uh, episode of nine came out. Yes. So Rise of Skywalker was the first movie I saw with the company that we work for. Why do I feel like it was the Last Jedi? Am I confused? Last Jedi came out in 2017. Oh wow, I am confused. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Anyway, so, sorry. Tangent. Yeah. No. Episode wow. nine was December of 2019, right before the pandemic. Aye. And we haven't had a movie since. But but like have Thanks you I mean COVID. like the last five years I mean have you heard people screaming for Ray more Ray No I haven't <laughs> No know? not at all Yeah 
again, I, I want to preface that I, I'm, I'm not against it. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm all for good stories, but. But that phrase just makes you go. Say, yeah, exactly. To huh? say that. Is, now, I don't know who's saying that. It didn't, it, possibly not someone from Lucasfilm either, but but that is that is crazy to think that that would be... Because right to be honest, right now, I would almost say, <laughs> dare I say it, I would almost say Hayden might be even more popular right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Than, than Daisy Ridley as far as doing Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Right? I hear more people wanting... Clone Wars live action yep. with Hayden and Ewan and, and bring and back Padme. Bring back bring back Natalie Portman. Bring yes. back Tamara Morrison. Like Bring back the the, 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 the sorry, I can't I remember her name. The girl played Ahsoka, young Ahsoka. In oh live my action. gosh, bring her back, please. She it's was like, amazing. Like th- that is what I'm hearing people want in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Not 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 necessarily Ray. So, anyway, what else? Anything more to to talk about on that one? I don't think so. I think it's just going to be a, we'll wait and see. Um, Yeah. I don't think I have anything else to say on that. Well, we are definitely getting, sounds like we're definitely getting this new Jedi Order movie with Rey. Mm -hmm. Now, again, she's not, Technically, he's supposed to be the main character in that either. Right. But it's going to be more focused on her and the Jedi Order and all that stuff. But we'll have to see if this new trilogy is going to incorporate her. Because this this could be all be just speculation. Again, like mm-hmm. the way things are in development, most of the time development doesn't even happen. So, so we'll see. But uh, let us know. Let us know what you guys think about Rey. And mm-hmm. if you want more Rey in Star Wars films. and Because again... Half of them aren't going to feature Ray because they're not in her timeline. Right. So to say that she's the central cinematic, you know, most valuable cinematic piece, it's like you're not even making movies around her timeline. So, right. Like it's just, I don't know. It's, it's a very outlandish thing, but maybe the reason why they said it is because people are going to talk about it. And what's worse than not, <laughs> than being talked about? Not being talked about. Not being talked about. True. So this could be. <gasps> did we just fall for like the biggest marketing scheme yet? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. That's that's how naive we are. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Okay, that's all we got for you this episode of Inside the Force. Good talk, Hannah. Good talk, Dave. On that, I think that that was a good conversation to have. I've kind of been thinking about that a little bit with when I read that because I was like. I'm curious what Hannah has to say about that because this is not um, not what I'm feeling. But yeah. All right. So as always, thanks everybody for joining us. Go to InsideTheForce.com if you want to link to our Patreon page or a link to our YouTube and get more content, especially beyond the sagas with Hannah and I talking about all the stories beyond the Skywalker saga. Mm-hmm. Continuing some comics right now on that and look for some novels that we'll be doing as well. And we'll be gearing up for some some coverage for our skeleton crew here soon, uh, as well as Martin and I doing some more Mandalore podcast back doing some of that as we, as we uh, get into skeleton crew during December and early January. So come back for all of that. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Hannah, as always. Thank you, Dave, as always. Have a good, I know you got a long day tomorrow. Have a good day tomorrow. (laughs) It's all fine. Everything's fine. (laughs) Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Take care. Thanks, everybody. May the force be with you.